Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Jackson's Forever channel. And uh, today we're going to have an intriguing topic. I want to understand why Teddy Riley didn't produce any songs on Michael Jackson's 1995 album, History. So if you're a fan of Michael Jackson or Teddy Riley, you're in for a treat. So we're going to dive straight into it. Now, to understand the story of the absence of Teddy on History, we need to go back a bit. So, you know, after the successful collaboration of the 1991 Dangerous album, fans were eagerly expecting and waiting for the next project to get it, especially myself, massive Teddy Riley fan, a massive Michael Jackson fan. In 1993, the wheels were in motion for the new album. Michael Jackson invited Teddy Riley and his entire production crew from New York to Virginia Beach. And among them was a 16-year-old Rodney Jerkins. And it would, in my interview with Rodney Jerkins on Halftime Chat, he said how that night, Teddy just said, everyone, get in the van. We've got two vans. We're all moving, driving to New York. Didn't say where or for what was going on. Halfway through the journey, Teddy turned to him and says, we just got a call from Michael. We're working on his new album and we can't wait to start on it. So the entire crew from Future Recordings moved down to New York, including Blackstreet, who were just releasing their first album, A Little, Dave Hollister, Chancey Black, and Teddy Riley, of course, were in the group. Now, the first track they were called to work on was for the upcoming Adams Family movie. And they had a track that Teddy worked on called Family Thing. Now, after interviewing Sprague Doogie, he said it was an amazing track. It was awesome. You know, Michael's vocals, Teddy's production, it was going to be a massive hit, massive hit. In fact, we've got a little sample of how the song was to be, but not to its fullest. Teddy had finished, received Michael's vocals, they're about to get ready to release it, and then trouble strikes. There have been many disgusting statements made recently concerning allegations of improper conduct on my part. These statements about me are totally false. As I have maintained from the very beginning, I am hoping for a speedy end to this horrifying, horrifying experience to which I have been subjected. I shall not in this statement respond. So just as the family thing was just about to finish up and about to be released, 
trouble starts. Michael Jackson gets accused of a assault against a minor, Joey Chandler. It was national news, it actually was worldwide news. They go to Michael's house, they, they, they search, they get a warrant. Michael's humiliated, everything associated with Michael Jackson becomes poison. The, um, the studio says, you know, we just can't wait for that. They quickly drafted in MC Hammer and MC Hammer had to quickly put together something called the um, Adam's Family Groove. Wasn't a great track, but it was rushed. And so you can understand why it wasn't as good because he was just called in the last minute to get the song completed. All the works that Mike, uh, Teddy and Blackstreet and, and the crew, future crew were doing for Michael, they had to stop because now Michael was in the biggest case of his life. Uh, he was facing jail, he was facing a, a, a massive trial. And so what Michael ended up doing is settling the case out of court, paying 25 million, and then going away on, re on a retreat just to try and clear his mind. But at the same time, while this was going on, you know, Teddy with Blackstreet were, were already hitting some, making some mute noise. Before I let you go, booty call, joy, it's a physical thing. All these tracks, Tonight's the Night, were starting to do well. And so Black Teddy saw that this is a good opportunity to really spend a lot more time and energy with Blackstreet. And at the same time, they also got a lot of support and encouragement from Interscope. And so Jimmy Iovine really put a lot of money um, into Teddy's hands. To, okay, look, this is a beautiful album. You guys did well, you know, went double platinum some good singles let's work on this follow-up now at the same time they were looking to work on a follow-up here comes michael you know taking a year off trying to recover from the uh, the ordeal of the trial he comes back to teddy says okay you know we've, we've spent some money made some tracks can we go back to the studio now teddy knows when you're working with michael it is a year a year and a half, sometimes two years of your time, just making songs, making tracks. And Michael isn't easy to record with because he's a perfectionist and he wants it done right. So he had to balance it out. Do I spend the next year and a half working with Michael on this album? Or do I just continue the momentum we've got with, with uh, Blackstreet? Plus, they've been getting an advance from Interscope to work on the second album. So at that time, unfortunately for us, Teddy fans and, and Michael fans, that Teddy wasn't able to do any work on history. And so Michael reached out to Jimmy Liam and Terry Lewis, reached out to R. Kelly and a number of other producers to work on history album. Um, to my disappointment, I only found that out when I bought the album and I looked through and I did see Teddy and, you know, I was quite disappointed. And, I, and history was mixed reviews. I mean, it didn't do well in the U.S., did well internationally, but not in the US. Um, it did, however, set some records. When Scream came out, it was the first out, the, the single with Janet Jackson debuted on the Billboard 100 at number five. And that at a time was a record, the highest charting debut single. That was toppled with You Are Not Alone, the song written and produced by R. Kelly. That track debuted at number one. It was the first time in Billboard's history that a song went straight to the charts at number one. And once you're the first to get to number one, doesn't matter what anyone else does, that record would never be broken. And so, yes, the album didn't do well in the US. It had a few hits, it had a few singles, did well internationally. Um, when we think of songs like um, Earth Song, powerful song about the environment. And back in 95, when it was released, I mean, we weren't too much clued up with global warming and things like that. But now that song speaks volumes about what we're facing. Stranger in Moscow was another one that, that, that wasn't too bad. But uh, all in all, as I said, the album did much better in Europe where Michael just toured. And that was actually the last time Michael did a tour on US soil after the, uh, after the Dangerous album. So that's why Teddy did not feature on Michael Jackson's history album. We later saw Teddy and Michael collaborate on the um, History in the Mix, the Blood on the Dance Floor, but those are old tracks, the Blood on the Dance Floor and also um, Ghosts. 
those were old tracks that they did for during the um, after Dangerous, but also during that time when the Michael and Teddy were working on tracks, those were tracks that they produced at that time. And Teddy wanted to update them um, in '97, but Michael says no, no, they're just fine as as they are. Um, but the next time Teddy and Michael did come together was when the Invincible album was worked on. And that's a whole nother story because Roddy Jerkins was given so producer credit on that album. Things happened and Teddy was drafted in, but we'll cover that in another video. Let me know what you think. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And who knows, we may get more and more interesting secrets between Michael, Janet, the Jackson Five and the whole family. Take care.